Hi there, I'm Amy Hamilton with Hamilton Native Outpost. We're here at the Bullhead Catfish Pond this morning getting ready to move cattle into this field. This is a diverse native grassland and a diverse native grassland has many plants growing in it and we like to get plants from what we call four functional diversity groups and these are cool season grasses, warm season grasses, wildflowers and legumes. In a diverse native grassland you know we might have up to 40-50 species in it. It's mid-April here and we're going to walk through this grassland looking at these uh, different plants growing today to see how we are uh, filling the solar collector. We've gotten to where we take a look at the land as a, as a, as a solar collector and what we want to do is soak up as much sunshine as possible and we want to show you how diverse natives do that best. Here we have a warm season grass from last year, the residue from it left. So you can see that it's not growing. This here cool season blade and the sedge, uh, sedges are cool season as well, uh, coming up through that old growth. And in the background you see here the taller wild rye. So you can see this wild rye here uh, on our Missouri forage and grassland stick is, is approaching about 12 inches high. Our goal is to graze these grasses, is, is just to take the first bite off of these cool season grasses because we're wanting to leave some blades so that uh, uh, we can start to photosynthesize and grow this forage back uh, real quick. Here in the early spring when the cool seasons are just beginning to grow, you know, we find that moving quickly is a good technique to, to encourage uh, regrowth of these cool season grasses. Here we have uh, one of our wildflowers that's just in, starting to grow. This is an oxi sunflower and you can see its leaves are more horizontal. Again, uh, trying to collect more sunlight. Uh, the wildflower leaves, many of them do have more horizontal leaves that uh, uh, and as the season progresses, you know, these stems elongate, uh, coming up to collect more sunlight in between, you know, these grasses that tend to be a little bit more vertical in nature. So you can see we have some warm season grasses here uh, left in this pasture. And we've gotten to where we try not to let this bother us because these warm season grasses can make good nesting habitat for quail underneath it. And then later, throughout the growing season, as the cattle graze, these forages, uh, this residue gets stomped to the ground. And as it's stomped to the ground, it makes a, an effective mulch. This mulch is important to keep the water that we get, uh, you know, in the ground. Just like mulching your garden, it stops water from wicking out of the soil into the at back out into the atmosphere. So we've come to look at the land, you know, as a, as a solar collector. And we are trying to maximize photosynthesis in our collector throughout the year. And here in Missouri, to do that, you know, we need these cool season grasses here early in the spring and later in the fall. And we also need the warm season grasses in the summer to do that. The more we can photosynthesize, uh, the more forage we're making, and uh, that's what we're trying to do. Uh, to make high quality forage, it takes an actively growing plant. So you can see that these warm season grasses would not be good to graze today. Uh, that's leftover and it just doesn't look very palatable. And the cool season grasses are what they will be selecting today. However, later in the season, uh, in the summertime, the warm season grasses are actively growing and uh, warm season grasses are actually very high in, in energy and cattle crave this energy and it's what uh, helps the cattle to put on fat, you know, as they, uh, during the summertime as they graze. So we'll be back here later. Uh, as the season progresses, we want to come back and show you how uh, these different grasses and wildflowers are are photosynthesizing and growing uh, to maximize photosynthesis throughout the year. So uh, stay tuned.
Hi, we're back here at the Bullhead Catfish Pond and it's May 31st. It's been 42 days since we were here with the livestock uh, when we took our last video. So we're going to be grazing this again here fairly soon. And you can see we have lots of palatable grass growing uh, with very few seed heads on the grass. So the main thing in our solar collector here is the wild rye. We have several species of wild rye. There's an early maturing rye and some here that mature later. Sedges and other early blooming cool season grasses such as June grass and wedge grass are important to the spring solar collector. As we go into summer, the cool season grasses will begin to put their energy into seed production and be less palatable, whereas the warm season grasses are just taking off. This warm season grass, big blue stem, is 24 to 30 inches tall. Here's an oxi sunflower. You can see it's grown a lot since April when it was only just a couple inches tall. The plant has bolted and come upright uh, along with the rise so that the leaves could keep gathering sunlight. This plant is also palatable to livestock. We'll graze this soon and take another bite off of it. We'll be back later in the summer to see how the cool seasons are taking a break and the warm seasons are actively growing. We're back here at our diverse native grassland and it's mid-August. We grazed this last on June 2nd, so this has had 69 days of rest. So let's get out in the field and take a closer look at what's going on in the grassland today. So as you look across the field, one of the first things that you see are these wild rye seed heads. This here is southeast wild rye. So this plant is dormant and will be ready to grow this fall when the temperatures cool down. We like to see these rye seed heads in our management because it ensures that we'll have uh, seed in the seed bank for future cool season grasses. So last April and May we looked for the sedges and uh, they were shorter plant material and uh, the cattle have grazed some of these off and they're just not very big out here in this grassland so they're hard to find today and we'll have to wait till spring to see them again. The most colorful plant in the field is this oxeye sunflower. It was grazed in June and is in full bloom today. So as we look past these wild rye heads we see uh, that this grassland is far from dormant. We have a lot of green growing uh, forage here and we see that the big blue stem is just starting to throw up a seed head. So you can see here the big blue stem is 36 inches tall here before uh, we're going to graze it here in August. The last time that we were here uh, the big blue stem was 24 inches tall in June and then we grazed it down. We probably took about half of that growth in June and it's now regrown to 36 inches. The two grazings earlier in the growing season have delayed the formation of the big blue stem seed heads. You can see that we have these seeds are in the boot and they will be emerging soon. In the seed production unit nearby that hasn't been grazed, we'll see that the big blue stem is just a little bit further along. This delaying of maturity in the big blue stem, you know, makes this grass a little bit more palatable today than if we hadn't grazed it. So it's, it's extended the range of good palatability for this warm season grass. Indian grass is another species that we have growing out in this grassland. Indian grass is just a little bit further behind uh, the big blue stem. It doesn't throw up a seed head quite as soon. So it maintains its palatability uh, a little bit longer without grazing. Traditionally, July and August are hot and dry. This year we've had some small rains, uh, you know, in the summer, but we really haven't had any appreciable rain. And, but in spite of that, these warm season grasses, 
you know, are able to use that water efficiently. They're just more efficient in the photosynthesis process with water. So we've all seen the cool season grass growth chart where the cool season grasses are growing early in the spring and then they dip in production, giving us this summer slump period. And the best thing to fill this summer slump period is with a green growing forage, such as these warm season grasses that we're looking at today. Since they're green and growing, they are the most palatable. We'll be bringing the cattle into this pasture soon, and we'll be back to check it out later. So we just moved the cows after the last graze of the growing season. As you can see, we've got a lot of knockdown forage. We've used a lot of the forage and we've certainly changed the look of this field. Yet we have enough residue, enough standing residue uh, for quail and other grassland birds to make nest in next spring. This knockdown forage minimizes runoff and evaporation of water from the soil before the plants get to use it. Since this graze was heavy, we got a lot of manure and urine laid down on the field. We don't fertilize and these nutrients from the cows will be cycled to the next growing crop. We wanted this graze to be heavy to set up for maximum regrowth for our winter stockpile. Winter stockpile is really important because that is when our forages are the most expensive to provide to our cattle. The water efficient warm season grasses will regrow faster than the cool season rise. And this will provide the bulk of our winter stockpile. We'll be back later in the year to check out our diverse native stockpile.